Hello everybody, I hope you're having a good day today. We're going to have another lesson, and this is the day the Lord is glad in it. Uh, for a lot of us, tomorrow is the Lord's day, and we're going to take advantage and assemble with the saints. So uh, we hope you can, you're able to do the same thing. All right, the title of the lesson is Failing to See the Big Picture. And that's what happens to just about everybody from time to time. And the story is told of three young men who inherited a farm from their father. And they decided they were going to make a go of becoming farmers. And as planting season arrived, the three men got up early and walked towards the barn. And as they approached, one of them saw the tractor was in horrible shape, so he went to get some parts to fix it up. Another son saw that the fences were broken. So he went to the lumber yard and bought the lumber to fix the fences. And the third son looked at the barn and the farmhouse and decided their farm would look better if they painted these structures. So he went to town and bought the paint. And there he goes. They worked on all the aesthetics but forgot one thing. They forgot the seed was still in the barn. And so they didn't get the seed planted and they failed at becoming farmers. See, any reputable farmer will tell you that the planting the seed is number one on any list. I mean, afterward, the, the taking care of crop is necessary, but if there is no crop to sell, there is no profit and no livelihood. And, of course, we have a similar story in the Old Testament in the book of Haggai. You know, in chapter 2 and verse 19, the question is asked, is the seed still in the barn? See, the passage in Haggai was making a point, and it should ring as true today as at any time. We sometimes get involved in taking care of the details that the overall project is lost. And the overall goal is lost. See, we, we see this in the world. I mean, many business owners get involved in aesthetics and image that they forget their purpose of business. Sometimes they actually do. See, a lot of restaurant owners work on the ambiance and the appearance of their restaurant. But if the food is bad, it doesn't matter to the customers how pretty the place is. See, some service companies concentrate on appearance, but if their service is bad, they're not going to have any customers. And so we need to bring the application of this to our way of life and the meaning for the church, the purpose for the church are guilty of what we call window dressing <clears throat> and I'm speaking the church at large in general not everybody does but see we want to portray a picture of piety and faithfulness towards others and inside we're guilty of worldliness you know Jesus talked about this well, when he spoke to the Pharisees and scribes in Matthew 23 it says you, you paint the picture outside but inside you're just full of dead men's bones and, and so uh, a lot of people are guilty of worldliness, and the truth eventually is going to come out, either being caught by others or when we appear before God in judgment. And some churches work on the building and auditorium to make it look pretty, and they, they got to make sure it looks pretty. Nobody will want to come if it's a plain building, and I, I've even heard that excuse. <clears throat> and why do you have to build something so lavish and so expensive when the, the money could be used for other elements of the Lord's work and well people just won't come if it doesn't have an appeal to it I mean we, I've heard that before and see that does not confirm or approve the congregation as being faithful to the Lord just because you have a nice pretty building and I mean I even heard of one congregation spent over a uh, hundred thousand dollars just on the bathroom alone I mean and the, the total cost was outrageous and, and so, but we see that. <clears throat> and, and so, the, pick, the problem is that we have failed to see the big picture. Yeah. And we do what our goal should be. That's what we should be doing, but a lot of times we get sidetracked. See, the church has the quality of teaching the Word of God. Well, that is the purpose of the church, to evangelize. And that is what churches should do. 
but not only inside with the truth coming from the pulpit, but as each member takes the truth, takes the time to teach others outside of the assembly. I mean, that's where it should be going, and all the members should be doing it. We can sit there and talk about this. I, I know one one congregation, they built a nice big building, and, and somebody put some flower pots uh, uh, up front, and they were very pretty, but then someone took them home. And they didn't know who it was, so they made a big deal about whoever took the plants, you need to bring them back in. I mean, that was the big focus for several weeks on that church. And what should have been of greater importance is the fact there's lost souls out there that need to be saved. And so the church does have the responsibility of teaching the word of God. And that's what they should do. Not only with the truth coming from the pulpit, but also each of us in our individual lives, we have to be setting an example of Christ. We have to be leading people to Christ by our example and by our guidance. We're, we're told to let our light shine and sometimes we act as we're supposed to be shining lights in a perverse generation. And so that's what we do. See, each Christian should remember that appearance is good and can help to influence others and set an example. I mean, that, that's what we have to be mindful of. We know people are watching us. If we've told anybody in the world that we're a Christian, they have their eyes on us. They're focused on us to see if we can fail. And if we fail, then they don't, they don't see any point in changing their way of life. So that's why we have to set a good example. And we have to, as Peter said, let your behavior be excellent among the Gentiles. And, and so appearance is not everything. We understand that. It's what's actually in our heart, not what's what we're trying to show the world. I mean, some you might th think of the word hypocrisy in here. And yes, that, that's a sad case with many people. Oh, I'm a churchgoer, but then they talk like the world, and they talk like their buddies, and uh, I mean, there's no difference in their life. So, appearance is not everything. See, our goal should be the same goal that belonged to Christ and to God. We know that God is not willing that any perish, Second Peter 3 and verse 9. And we should look at souls in the same way and not allow them to perish. I mean, Jesus looked at people and saw them as sheep without a shepherd and he had compassion on them. We should also have compassion because we realize these people are lost. They need salvation. They need guidance towards salvation. And that's what we're supposed to provide is that guidance. Now, whether they actually obey or not, I mean, that's really up to them. But we should be giving them the guidance they need. And yeah, because we know many people will ignore our pleas to turn to God or return to God, but that does not give us the excuse of not even trying. And, and there's a problem there. Well, they, they, they just won't listen or they're not interested. Have you ever looked at somebody and just decided, well, they're not, in, they're not worthy of my time to try and teach them the gospel because they won't be interested. Yeah, you come along with some, some guy with long stringy hair and tattoos all over his body and nose rings and ear rings and all other kinds of rings. Oh, no, they're not interested. How do you know? That's not your place to judge. You're supposed to plant the seed just like the seed sower. And yeah, seed sower planted seeds. Some fell on hard soil, some fell on rocky soil, some fell on thorny soil, but some fell on good soil. So we don't know. We can change people. And I have seen people that did look like that who eventually obeyed the gospel. And, and so... I mean, it can be done. So we should look at souls in the same way. And we should not allow them to perish. And so uh, we, we need to be like Jesus. See, we must look to what Jesus was. He was a servant, first and foremost. He, we as Christians should be seeking what Jesus was seeking, to help people get to heaven. You know, that, there, there's a lot of instances people came up to Jesus and, you know, what, what about the Legion? I mean, he was practically naked and he was a very vicious person. And you'd think, oh, no, no, he would never be receptive to a gospel message. He would never be one who uh, tried to please God. I mean, when we make those choices, 
we are taken away from Jesus and his power. We're taken away from the power of the gospel when we refuse to share the gospel with So our goal should be seeking what Jesus was seeking, to help people get to heaven. I'm, I'm always telling the congregation where I preach, your number one job is to help others get to heaven. Number one job is to help others get to heaven. When you do that, then you're going to ensure it yourself gets to heaven. A lot of people just look at, my goal is get me to heaven, and that's as far as people are willing to take it. No, our number one job is to help others get to heaven. Now, here's where we need to make application of the lesson. Folks, we do have the word of God in our Bibles, in our possession. And should we not be sharing this word with others? Well, absolutely we should. Should we not be providing the greatest need known to humankind? The biggest problem of humankind is sin, and Jesus is the answer. God gave us the answer in the Bible. And so God has a plan of salvation for man's greatest need. Salvation. And, 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 and what, would, what do we do with that word? We say nothing. <clears throat> and there's people out there who pervert God's plan. And they teach error and guide people in the wrong direction. And we say nothing. We don't, we don't say that, no, nah, that's not right. So do we not care about souls? I mean, we're supposed to. If we don't care about souls, then we're not going to go to heaven. Even a fellow by the name of Charles Spurgeon said that like 160 years ago. If you don't care for souls, then you're not going to go to heaven. Just plain and simple. I agree with that. See, until we learn to care about souls and expose them to the truth, we will not be like Jesus. We will not be like the apostles. We will not be like those in the first century who went everywhere preaching the word. See, in Acts 8, verse 4, the Christians who had been scattered because of the persecution went everywhere preaching the word. So our application in this matter is that we should realize that perhaps we have been concentrating <clears throat> on the wrong things. We might be concentrating on thou shalt nots. I mean, there, there, there's quite a few thou shalt nots, and I would imagine most of us and most of you who are listening to this broadcast can sit down, probably go through all those thou shalt nots and check them off, and then you get down the end, hey, you feel pretty good about yourself because you don't do those things. But have you ever made a list of the thou shalts? Thou shalt do this, thou shalt do that, you must do this, you must be this. Have you ever gone through that list and checked it off? I mean, that, you'd find yourself quite lacking. And, and so just because we, do, we concentrate on the thou shalt nots, that doesn't mean we've, we've accomplished it all. Because Jesus said, teach them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Yeah, he said he gave us some thou shalt nots, but he also gave us some things that we're supposed to be, that we're supposed to do. And a lot of times we fail there. <clears throat> so the primary goal is to give Jesus our hearts and bodies for his service and not really for our own. It, we must be servants, not only of Jesus, but servants of one another, as we're, we're told in the Galatian letter. So we're to serve one another. And we should be doing whatever we can to encourage our fellow Christians. Even the Hebrew writer says to, to stimulate them to love and good works. And, and that's what we're supposed to do all the more as we de see the day approaching. So encourage our fellow Christians and teaching those who are not Christians. That is what our job is. When we become servants, we will seek the better welfare of others and not be so selfish to seek our own welfare at least first of all. See, we encourage them because we see a day approaching when it will be too late. You know, there's a great day coming, but the last line of that, there's a sad day coming. For so many people, it's going to be a sad day because they're going to hear of their... And the day when our Lord returns in the air and gathers up his own, and he's going to gather up all the rest, and we're all going to face judgment at the same time. See, the day of judgment will be the time when our faithfulness will become evident. If we are truly trying to help others get to heaven, we will be approved and invited into the feast of the Lord in heaven. But if we've been doing nothing more than window dressing and cannot get beyond the thou shalt nots, 
uh, then, then we will not be worthy. So don't get me wrong, the thou shalt nots are important, and thou shalt, yeah, they're also important. But we still have to observe and practice them. It's just that we have to practice them in light of the bigger picture, the bigger goal. And these are not for our personal use only, but for us to set the example for others. And these are just the tools we need to be planting the seed. Yeah, if the seed is not planted, there can be no increase, and our efforts will fail. In the book of Haggai, he talks about the fact, and one of his statements, he talks about things are not going good for you. You plant and don't get any crops, and why? Because the, the seed is already spoiled from the, from the mold, and uh, they're no good anymore. That's because you sat on and so that, that's something we have to avoid doing, is sitting on what we have too long. It's supposed to be used. I mean, anything is supposed to be used, has a proper method, and it will last a lot longer. I mean, it's, it's like getting a vehicle, but only driving it once a year. I mean, that thing's going to break down long before somebody who drives the vehicle every day and keeps up the maintenance on it. So, I mean... We just know that's the way things work. If they're not being used, they decay, they, they get rusty, uh, they, they're going to break down, and they're going to be worthless. And so, these are just the tools we use to plant the seed. And so, if there is no seed planted, there can be no increase. And if we have been making any effort, it will fail. See, that's the problem. We're, most likely, we're not making any effort at all, and we're, we're, we're trying to figure out why are things failing. Well, because we're not making the effort. I mean, it should be easy enough to understand. See, our job is to plant the seed. And we know from Matthew 13, the seed is the Word of God. We're supposed to plant the Word of God in people we come in contact with. But we must also realize it is God who gives the increase. So let us be like the seed sower in Matthew 13. Let us spread the message to all, and perhaps some will fall upon the good soil. So that, that's the lesson. I mean, it, it's easy enough to understand. The difficulty comes in putting it into application, and I think we all realize that. But let us encourage each other. Let me encourage you, and you in turn encourage those of your congregation and the brethren that you assemble with, and uh, make sure that they are doing what God wants them to do, focusing on the big picture. So consider these thoughts. That's our lesson for today. Um, Lord willing, we'll be back again tomorrow with another lesson, and you have a good and blessed day, and do something for God today. Go out and plant some seed. I mean, just think about that. Plant seed. Do what you can to promote. I mean, just... Hand out flyers with uh, the church's information on it, uh, the congregation's information on it, maybe the address and the times of worship. Just drop those around in different places. I mean, that's just like seed. And um, who knows? You might get somebody who is seeking the Lord in truth and spirit because Jesus said there are those out there, John 4, 21. And yes, that's what we're looking for. So uh, consider these thoughts. Uh, you have a good day, and Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.